Thank you. Yay. Mm. So, uh, uh, can we put the um, lotus up on the screen? Oh. Um, can you see alive to the world here? It's cutting off a little bit the bottom and my laptop. It's underneath Bodhicitta. Yay! There it is. Hmm. What a lotus coming out of the ocean there or the lake. Hmm. Let's leave it up there for a moment. <clears throat> Is anybody here for the first time? Welcome. Thanks for being here. Hope it's not your last time. <laughs> it's okay to come once, you know, like. Uh, <clears throat> I, I like it when um, members go and visit other services. Um, now that maybe people feel a little safer to go. Um, and I don't have time to anymore, but I like to visit other sanghas or even other churches or whatever, you know, um, and uh, establish uh, relationships and friendly things. <clears throat> so I welcome visitors. Everybody comfortable? Thank you. So as part of uh, Losar, uh, I wanted to have this introduced back then, but we'll just pretend uh, Losar New Year's is still happening, right? So, because it is. So I wanted to have a visual, I want to have a visual to let people know all the uh, different um, activities um, we're doing here at Lions Roar and how it, how it kind of works in a visual way, or at least how I visualize it. <clears throat> when we're meditating um, uh, Mahayana or Tantric style, uh, the idea is we're sitting and a flower. Okay. Um, that's not so important from maybe Hinayana point of view or even Mahayana, but from Vajrayana or Tantric point of view, you, you were trying to take on the qualities of, of whatever, Buddha, whatever Buddha form we're working with. And since they arise out of lotus flowers, we have to be sitting on a lotus flower. The lotus flower is a big symbol um, coming out of the mud and um, continually opening up. I don't. I guess all lotuses don't open up all the time, but the the metaphor. Of, some do, right? They're just they always seem to be open. So that's why we like the lotus flower. Actually, all the Vedic, all the traditions of India, we like lotuses, don't we? So. <clears throat> One one of the logos logos for lions were is is the lotus flower. Another one is the snow lion. Like that. So, uh, when we're looking at this um, artwork or diagram, imagine that you're um, right now sitting um, a lotus. And um, in our tradition too, we imagine we're um, we're sitting on a sun and moon seat cushion yeah just a little arcane knowledge for those interested if usually if we're peaceful beings manifestations we're 
sitting on the, the moon seat is on the top, or there's no sun, just the moon. And if we're fierce, um, compassion, then it's we're sitting on a sun. So all of you are facing the wrong way, but uh, there's Vajrapani uh, Tonka in the back there, and the, the lotus um, center is uh, really golden yellow, right? Lots of flames. Yeah. <clears throat> But uh, uh, Shakyamuni um, generally is uh, flashing out that like a moon, a moon seat, very soothing. <clears throat> Any other uh, astrological cancers here in the room? We we love our moonlight, don't we? So one of my favorite sadhanas or practice manuals. I received early on from my teacher it's a meditation on Tara that's called Moonlight to Open the Lotus Within. Isn't that nice? Moonlight to Open the Lotus Within. <clears throat> and an important meditation that uh, perhaps we'll do um, next time we do a residential or overnight retreat. So I'm doing a shout out to Ellen here to remind me is um, if, if there's the moon, uh, when we're doing it, then it's nice to uh, meditate outside to the moon and then uh, put out some bowls with water and then meditate on the reflection in the bowls. Very traditional kind of meditation. <laughs> Moonlight to open the lotus within. Mm. Also, when we're sitting on our lotus, uh, is. Uh, it, it's it's grounded and floaty at the same time. So just like our posture is, you know, if our pelvis is all locked up, then you, you won't feel that float sense, right? You know, sitting there with hard butt. No, just, you know, we can, we should be able to feel, you know, a little bit, right? <laughs> so that, and sitting on a lotus, you have this uh, sense of support but flexibility at the same time. And it's, um, um, you're in a lake with other lotuses, so here's all your lotus friends. <clears throat> I mentioned a couple of times that it's really nice um, to look at a pond, um, which I had the opportunity a number of times in India, and then be there at sunrise, and then you see the light hitting the water and the lotus. And then then you really see the devas, right? Then you can imagine like you know, dancing Buddhas and devas. Um, it's very easy. Maybe um, maybe there's some lotuses we can find at some retreat. <clears throat> Get up in the morning. <clears throat> so um, the um, the the start of the growth of the lotus is um, alive to the world. Um, that's our life force. We're, uh, even before anything, we're just basically alive, right? Primary. Yeah. Something's going on. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we may not know exactly what it is, but... Uh, heart's beating and we're breathing and something's going on. Even if we're terribly confused, you know, we're alive. And uh, the, the world is presented to us, right? Well, it's kind of um, interesting. Uh, we're kind of born into the world um, and it's presented to us, but we bring our aliveness to it. So that's why I say, Reality in our tradition is what's there and what we bring to it in the middle. So alive to the world. Bodhicitta is that a really um, uh, is a response generally to to suffering and the need to transcend um, our dualistic framework. So 
when we're alive to the world uh, as children, you know, we're not thinking, I need to be free of suffering right away and benefit others, right? Hopefully we're just, I mean, let's, let's imagine we have the myth mythological perfect childhood. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably none of us had, but maybe, you know, so we're, we're just really alive to our, our lived experience, right? It's totally, you know, like, everything's kind of interesting, you know, it's like, you know, bugs on the sidewalk are interesting, and um, darts, interesting. Um, you know, just a lot of things are just, you know, we're just, it's all when amazing, right? As children and frustrating too, you know, because <laughs> even if we have a really great parents or whatever, there are times that we're alone, but it's all very new and and uh, unmediated, don't you think? It, it's later when we become more cognitive and we're taught language probably that we start developing some kind of idea that we want to um, wake up further, we want to know more, we want to relieve others of suffering. So I'm pointing out that you know kids sometimes are, we're talking about adults and we're developing bodhicitta, but actually kids are enormously compassionate, aren't they? You know, they're, kids are always trying to help their parents, you know, I'm always struck by that, you know, like, so that, some of us parents uh, looking back, we're like, God, the kids are trying to help. <laughs> Usually they're trying to say, why are you, why are you and mom and dad arguing? Or it's not even that, like, why are you using your loud voice? <laughs> or, you know, they're even younger, like three, two, three, like, my ears are hurting. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, kids are enormously responsive to the world, um, but a lot of times they don't have the the cognitive thing built yet. But the bodhicitta um, is springing out of that aliveness, and when it gets some cognitive view, you have some kind of identity, um, then you can say, "I I want to help others. I want to be free. I can't stand that others are suffering." Usually it's kids with pets, don't you think? So I had a turtle. <laughs> Anybody, oh, this is how old I am. Anybody familiar with the Eloise books from childhood? I like because I was from New York and she lived in the plaza. And, uh, so I, my turtle was named Skipperty. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, Skipperty, like, it's great. But as a kid, I didn't know that you really can't just kind of let turtles out that much. So took Skipperty out to the backyard and Skipperty ran under the bush. And that was the last I've ever seen a Skipperty. I was like, yeah, I was heart, you know, heartbroken. You know, fortunately, my mom was into animals, and yeah, but we're going to say as adults, we'll get you another, you know, but it's devastating, isn't it? Like your first, you know, your cat or your mouse or rat. Anybody have rats growing up? Can, yeah, I mean, I know, they're, they're so nice. <clears throat> so bodhicitta comes out of this aliveness and the even pre-conscious response to suffering, but gets gets developed when we can form an identity and we can see there, there are others, you know, that are suffering. Unfortunately, even sometimes adults are unable to see their other people, you know, they're just kind of solipsistic, you know. There may be others, but not everyone seems just a projection of me. Then then it's hard to develop bodhicitta, right? Develop bodhicitta, you have to have this balance of the kind of we're kind of the same and other at the same time. I'm a turtle, but I'm not a turtle. How's that work? But I miss my turtle. So, you know, what? Is, what's the turtle thinking? Do turtles think? My turtle thinks. I'm sure of it. So this is the bodhicitta world where you start exploring uh, 
suffering and identity. This is not the, just the moral bodhicitta. The moral bodhicitta is very adult saying, you know, I have to develop bodhicitta in order to be a bodhisattva and help other beings and the ought bodhicitta. This is just trying to portray it's a natural response to being alive to the world. Um, Guru Yoga is central to tantric practice. Um, uh, it, it is the central point of um, Vajrayana Buddhism. Sometimes people miss that, so I'm just putting it right there. Why is it the central point? Is because um, when we're doing these prayers, um, if you're paying attention, you're making a resolution to um, have the same qualities as the Buddha, right? Period. You just said, well, may I become a Buddha. Um, and in our tradition, the only way to do that is to meet a teacher that you're able to see as awake. Because if we don't meet people in person, then it, it remains somewhat of a myth, right? We actually have to spend time uh, for it to sink in to absorb uh, the Buddha qualities um, of somebody that you've become familiar with. It's that easy. We sure absorbed a lot from our parents, didn't we, and our siblings, right? So um, parents and siblings or kindergarten teachers or high school teachers can be part of um, that sense of guru yoga, right? Um, sometimes they teach by mistake, you know, through their mistakes. But uh, generally, uh, what's interesting about our tradition is that we we want to find living representatives to be our guides. And we want to, you know, absorb the qualities through familiarity and through meditation. So um, I don't know how anybody really does guru yoga without actually hanging out. Um, uh, but uh, the formal aspects of guru yoga, of course, are prayers and visualizations, but the actual guru yoga is you just hang out, you know. <clears throat> One of the best people to talk about hanging out that I met um, was uh, Baba Ram Das. So uh, he was very good at telling stories about Neem Karoli Baba and actually just kind of hanging out. And um, uh, was, you know, being me, you know, I did a retreat with Ram Das years ago. I'd say, well, what kind of structure do you, you know, what were the teachings, of, you know, and blah, blah. And he just, well, we just hung out. We go, well, how could you get anything from hanging out? Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, that, that was nice, you know, so um, uh, I actually still have, like, uh, back in the day, uh, if you did a retreat with Ram Das, he used to give you a mala with, um, uh, a mala thread was from uh, uh, Nim Karoli Baba's uh, uh, blanket, you know. Then later somebody says, well, you don't know whether it's the real blanket. <laughs> I think it probably was, you know, um, but I think uh, me and Curly Baba had a lot of blankets. That's my solution, okay? <laughs> Sticky with it, you know. Uh, I, don't, I don't think Ram Dass like, okay, we're taking his blanket. Um, but he used to just um, uh, hang out the, you know, look like a bomb, you know, hanging out the railway station. <clears throat> As, as a, the lotus grows, I'm going to see in the center of the Middle Way Community Project. So um, that's kind of under, hard to understand. What is that? Well, the idea is um, I want the temple here to be a community temple, not just for us, but for as much community that wants to come here. So um, that's why we're developing the spaces here and developing the garden and developing a pavilion and having concerts and badminton and and 
little Buddhists and things like that. Um, people are more likely to come to outside things if you want to invite um, guests and um, you know parties or music or something like that, then they will come to a service, right? So we're going to develop the outside and, and the inside with the idea that um, we're going to try to be in the middle. So the fundamental, one of the fundamental metaphors for Dharma, it's not a metaphor, a teaching is just uh, uh, take the middle way, the via media, right? So take the middle way between extremes. So we want to be, we want to be in the middle. We want to be a middle ground where people can come from different faiths and different political and different uh, ethnicities, you know, together. Because the tendency is, we just want to stick with people that look just like us and talk just like us. It's very difficult to um, get a get a group of people um, consistently that come from dif different socioeconomic and racial things. Very difficult. When I meet with other people, and we get beyond the kind of the jazz of it. Um, then we all say the same thing, whether meeting with Mongolian leaders or African American leaders or Vietnamese. It's it's really difficult. We could have a discussion about that. You know, I'm not particular. I'm not on a a conceptual idea of trying to bring people together. Like, okay, we've got to find three this and you know, do that. And we have to create an environment where actually it it could actually work where people, you know, want to come together. And one of the best ways that I found to do that is through, not through meditation always or formal sitting or ritual, but through music and food. You know, um, so uh, I put a big uh, emphasis on um, uh, people, you know, doing musical. Uh, music is the prayers we do ahead of time. That's called music. And then we have music as I walk out, and we need music coming in too, right? Eventually, you know. Um, so I'm very happy, you know. Just uh, uh, Mike Hatfield's willing to come back and bring Kirtan now back on April, correct? Yeah. So um, uh, Kirtan's a sing along is a sing-along event, really. So I'm looking forward to do that. If you want to do tantric practice, it's not enough to have bodhicitta to meditate, to think your teacher is awake. You have to sing. <laughs> <laughs> I heard some, like, gasping. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that so? I don't know. Is it? I don't know. You know. So, um, singing uh, is uh, singing together. Singing goes deeper. Lots of times, poetic singing, particularly mantric singing, um, goes deeper into the mind than um, uh, lots of times narrative discourse. And the singing, uh, you know, when I say singing, I'm including mantra, you know, mantric singing or just singing will get us through um, difficult periods where absolutely nothing else works. It's really interesting. So um, one time I was like, I love little balancing things. I, I was always thought it was totally cool, you know, um, like how you know going to the circus and seeing the people on the high wire, <clears throat> the flying Karamatsa brothers or something. Um, so I was even trying it on the balance scheme, and the coach, this was like in junior high, it said, "Try singing a song while you're walking on the beam." It's really interesting. So uh, the singing, particular kind of singing. Um, 
will will be of great benefit to us. But in Vajrayana, um, Tantric Dharma, um, it's all about show up and show me. Show me what you got. It's internal practice, but um, the internal practice manifests as show me what you got, you know? So show me world, because all of reality is just showing up. Right now, emptiness is showing up as the floor and the chairs, and the roof overhead. Emptiness is showing up as the colors. Emptiness is showing up as these living beings, strange beings, right? Emptiness shows up as music. The, over the, the main part of the central lotus is service to the world. So um, I don't always want to bring people here to Lion's Roar. It's a nice environment. I, I want people to go out. So that's part of chaplaincy, but also, you know, visiting uh, other groups and being peacemakers or just being interesting. Um, so I haven't had time to do that, you know, so I have friends that go, you know, to local synagogues and um, dharma centers and um, mosques. So I have to the, I have to improve my Arabic, you know, so at least I can say inshallah, right? Like, or salam, right? Yeah, salam alaikum. So, uh, hmm? very good. Yeah. So um, we're, we're not going to get world peace unless we learn to speak people's languages. At least something, you know, it's like, you know, at least, uh, uh, bonjour, comment ça va? You know, I mean, just, it's so, it's just so amazing how just a little bit of language and uh, a little bit of singing brings people together, don't you think? Yeah. So at the top, I, I put the arts and I put expressions. So by expressions, I just don't mean the expressions that I'm hosting with. Clement, but um, it, it all comes down to we're expressing ourselves. Actually, you can't help doing it. You're all expressing yourselves as strange uh, bipeds who are mostly hairless with cloth on them. You know, uh, we can't help it. So uh, we're always expressing ourselves. So if you think, oh, I don't know if I like to express myself, well, the silence is deafening sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah. This uh, the the central part of the um, lotus supports um, the the very essential petals, you know. So you can see. Um, I've tried not to put everything on there, uh, but um, before I did the post, do the poster, or put it on the website, I thought I better take it to the sangha because. There's always things we don't see, right? So I, I you know, we 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 might be able to add more, but um, I, I'd like to open it up to see if I'm doing something useful here, and uh, people um, could offer suggestions, or I guess you could say take that off. But <laughs> <laughs> what's fun got to do with it? Um, it's really got to be fun, or I'm not going to do it. So that's for me. So can can we open it up to a little discussion and and see if uh, people have some? Um, it's okay. It will hurt my feelings when you say this means absolutely nothing to me, but I, I still need to hear it. <clears throat> oh, you can't. Well, um. At the at the uh, the first um, petals on each side of Guru Yoga, this chaplaincy, healing, and recovery, and leadership in Kirtan. <clears throat> and then, and then going going up on one side, this this fun and maintenance. They're not quite the same size, but. I think cleaning can be 
Well, I don't know if it's reversed or, but um, somewhere along the line, you should be having seeing the Lotus and one, one pedal says fun and another pedal says maintenance. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter which side it's on. It could be flipped. Yeah. And then there's study and meditation and yoga. Is it getting bigger now? Oh, so it's been really small. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you'd be able to read it. Maybe I should jump off. Oh, and look, is that big enough or not? Not not so good. It's not working, guys. Sorry, we're trying to zoom. That's but good. Technology but not well. Else. So on either, either side of middle way community project study, meditation, yoga, like I said, fun and maintenance. And then on one side is little Buddhas, the other side is party celebration and social justice. And then the, toward the top, martial arts and friendship, like that. Is it getting bigger now? Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you for pointing out you couldn't see it. Otherwise, yeah, the whole point is so people can see it. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Are we done yet or not? Uh oh, that's okay. Yeah. Are we missing anything? Yeah, yes, sir. The mud. Yeah, you know, that's that's a good point. You know, so that was something Patty and I talked about. You know, uh, we'd probably need like, uh, you know, I'm open to doing that. We need, you know, to have a little longer, like maybe, you know, if it's a sheet, it would be like 11 by 14 or something like that. But yeah, I, I do like that suggestion. What's your name, sir? Oh, country, very nice. Sangha. So um, the, the mud's a very important metaphor that uh, it's uh, part of the lotus uh, uh, vision. So we could do that. We could, you know, make some uh, mud and we could put a turtle. We could play with a couple of like uh, old tires or something, you know, at the bottom of the lake there. And then, uh, yeah, good. Okay, we could do that. Yeah. I had a question. Yeah. Um, some of the text is bigger than the other text. Is that to communicate uh, importance or is that just for design? That's a little bit of importance to okay. to get the you know the bodhicitta and the Korean community service and expressiveness is okay. the, the a big push, and that the, these other things depend upon that, um, like that. So, uh, so that bodhicitta doesn't become totally a private thing. Uh, you know, we have a teacher, so it doesn't become just. For me, we have community, and then there's a sense of service, and finally this like expression, like you know, and the, and the um, the lead, you know the uh, petals come out of that. Mm. So <clears throat> when making. There we go. When making something like this, I always think, what's the end goal? So is the end goal 
who's the, you know, who's the viewer besides just us. So I think, do we need more information or less information, depending on if it's just the Sangha? <clears throat> do we need a, do we need a key? Um, do we need a what? Like a little key a in the key. bottom that says, you know, oh, okay. study is da 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 da, little bit of yeah. da 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 da, yeah, yeah. Arts, yeah. Da, da, da. yeah. Because um, I'm just thinking, who's the end user? If the end user is the sangha, this is probably fine. But if the end it's user, it's got to be everybody, or right? If the sense. end user is for the right. community, then we probably need to yeah. make it more. Yeah. What, what, I, what I'm, why I want a visual. I like the lotus anyway, but um, I, I wanted it has a certain linear quality to it because of the stem and it's kind of rising through. But then it has this 360 kind of. Uh, idea also so it's non-linear and it's continually opening so then yeah we have to explain you know why, why do we like flowers and lotuses and and yeah and not to make it more complicated yeah. but i will offer it yeah go yeah you could start as a sequential mud water and have it blossoming and growing and then showing as things go and then this is the this is the penultimate idea of what you know we're doing at lion's roar i will put this away now <laughs> uh do we have any questions you dropped a really big word penultimate i like that oh, that's, a good, that's a good one down with that yeah. i have a suggestion if you want to make the text more visible try giving a slight outline in white mm. okay um Patty was experimenting with that, and um, yeah, yeah, um, I, I, yeah, I wanted, I wanted actually readable, but I, I wanted the it to be presented. The, the nice thing about visual art is you can see something kind of all at once. So, so they're not kind of just totally sequential or something like that. Mm. Yeah. La la la. Any anybody on Zoom have any questions or suggestions? And chaplaincy is a little fuzzy, maybe chaplaincy, healing and recovery. Yeah. Yay. Uh, leadership has a lot to do with um, the sign that's in the kitchen. There's a long sign at the top that Heather made called Bodhisattvas look around for things to do. So we, we don't have um, a huge staff here, you know, so even the the uh, um, the Vajra cleaners, you know, it's kind of voluntary and self-regulating. So, um, uh, you know, it's it's taking responsibility. You know, like so I think, well, um, I join a club and other people will pick up the towels. You know, or so there was a um, a wonderful Zen teacher. Um, was a was a uh, male uh, stripper and, and impersonated Tommy Dorsey uh, from San Francisco. Anybody in um, uh, what was his Dharma name? We'll think of it in a second. But, um, pardon me, Isan. Correct. Thank you. So um, he uh, there was a turning point in his book that um, David Snyder, who I know, wrote a book about um, Isan. And uh, Roshi, and you know, just picking up some trash and the hate. You know, interesting. Just kind of, I don't know if anybody was in the hate in the '60s or '70s, but it could be pretty funky. Uh, now it's kind of gentrified, isn't it? So, yeah, but just taking responsibility. I'm going to do it, and then, uh, then he, you know, of course, went on and um, started Hart Hartford Street Zen Center and and all that, but uh, incredible sense of just 
responsibility and that kind of um I liked him and kind of fun in a bitchy fun kind of way kind of person <laughs> did, they, uh, did anybody beside me like spending time around your son you know I me mean? yeah but yeah yeah so something like that so like okay if who else is going to do it but us right so it leadership means we're, we're not just thinking someone else is going to be responsible not that we're taking it's not about ma management or being on top it's about you know modeling you know just taking responsibility so hey okay. Arts. I think everyone could hear you, so um, well, uh, I think uh, most people aren't. I'm I'm actually the only consistent sangha member that's doing uh, martial arts, but it's a big part of, you know, like Robert Nakashima is here, like maybe four days a week and brings in people um, from all over the community. Um, you know, so I don't know, I've kind of, it was like confession time. I've kind of given up on trying to get people to do some kind of martial art training. Um, uh, but, uh, so don't worry, I'm not gonna try to get anybody to go. Um, but, uh, you know, for for me, it's been it's important like coordination, health wise, and uh, it it brings a, a certain kind of uh, hopefully healthy warriorship in. Um, so when I was a kid, reading about the Buddha, because I was started reading really early, is it was kind of um, attractive because he he was uh, you know. A good at archery and martial arts and stuff. So I thought this the dude wasn't interested in becoming enlightened at that point. So, uh, but I um, spent a lot of time in the past doing jujitsu and wrestling and um, being a tai chi dilettante. And, um, you know, it works. So it's a big. I mean, it's a big part of what we do here, actually. Pretty much, it's on the website, I hope, or maybe not, but like Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursday evenings, Saturday, Saturday at nine o'clock is the big class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, most people find him difficult to study with because he's um, um, traditional. But all my teachers have been really traditional. And it's very consistent. Asian teachers don't tell you you're doing great all the time. And just, you know, if you're not if you're not making any if you if you're doing okay, they don't say anything generally. Um, if you're screwing up, though, it means that you're you're totally screwing up. This, so I really respond well to that kind of um, teaching style, obviously. So that's then. But American style is you just kind of let people kind of wave their arms. So it's it's difficult practice, actually. But um, it has been good um, uh, good training for the inner yogas. I mean, I've, I've done the inner yoga training, the sa, we sometimes call it the six yogas of Naropa or sa lung tigle training. Um, because many of the um, ways to work are very similar like that. Um, so Tai Chi is difficult because we're, all our moves are, um, or karate, jujitsu, because all our regular daily moves are tend to be disjointed and you have to move a certain way. Um, and uh, uh, you're really working with the chi or prana or uh, lung and uh, doing it's difficult, right? So um, 
for those um, people that are able to keep make and keep tantra commitments, they can do the Salong Tigle practice, the inner yogas. But um, doing the inner yogas, um, uh, you know, whether you're doing it through kind of a Argu Gelug system or Nyingma system, are actually extremely difficult, you see. Um, and um, or, because it, it, the whole setup uh, kind of goes against uh, the normal way we set up our body and mind and identity, right? So a lot of times people think, oh, I'm going to do some selling practice and we'll just do this and do this or <laughs> stand on my head. But, uh, you know, uh, you're actually not engaging uh, it properly. It's the same way as just kind of waving your arms doing Tai Chi. So it, they're actually very, they come at the end, uh, as some people know, generally after someone's made, you know, refuge commitments, bodhisattva commitments, tantric, because uh, the, the practices, as some people know, an audience here and um, my Zoom, um, they're difficult. And uh, the tendency is like, you either get discouraged, like I can't do it, or your teacher is wrong or bad or stupid or something, you know, and you can't do that in Tantra. You can't like be thinking, well, got this far and now my teacher just doesn't understand me. That, you know, I was doing so well before I started doing the inner yogas. There must be something wrong. You know, I'll go find another teacher. And that happens, of course. But um, by the time you do the inner yogas, your basic uh, maturity is hopefully pretty high, so you, you're able to have a high frustration tolerance. I have a very high frustration tolerance, or we wouldn't have a temple here, uh, and I wouldn't be able to do the inner yogas, because I'll just keep doing it. Um, but the inner yogas are as difficult as doing, uh, you know, the maybe, probably, I would say in some sense more difficult than doing the martial arts, because not only, usually with martial arts, people aren't saying, okay, now you have to take bodhisattva vows and, um, uh, you know, you have to regard your sensei or sifu as, you know, enlightened master, you know. Um, but um, it works better that way, actually. So, um, you know, you, I'm, you know, of course, you know, we're all human beings and teachers get, uh, they have their foibles, but... Um, it, it's uh, if you want to do the highest yoga practices, you have to like go all well, this is this is it's going to be hard and frustrating. So it's very similar to doing martial arts and like that. Because you just keep doing it and you go, I didn't get it. And then after about 2000 tries, then you go, oh, okay, maybe I'm getting it. Like that. So there's a big, there's actually quite a big leap from. Hinayana to Mahayana, and then quite a big leap from Mahayana to doing Tantra. And um, frankly, just only a few people can do real Tantra. Just have to say it, you know, because um, you're just, you're making commitments and you have to take leaps that um, you have to do willingly, you know. So a good teacher is not going to push somebody off the diving board. If you push somebody off the diving board, they don't feel the leap, right? You know, and it's abusive, you know, so so there's, there's very few people that are going to want to jump off the diving board. Yeah, because it's difficult. So long answer. <laughs> I don't know, you know, maybe we could put other things in here like gardening and, you know, and, you know, meal prep or, but um, uh, if people start from, a uh, sense of respect for our lineage and our teachers, and we start from a sense of healing and recovery leadership, and we start singing early, then it goes better. If you teach kids to sing early, then it'll stick with them, right? Mm. Yay. I don't know, has this been helpful? Mm, hope so. Uh, can everyone hear you? 
Could you explain Kirtan? Oh, Mike is here, so. <laughs> Yay. Um, so um, my, my emphasis today has been on, you know, participation and um, uh, uh, there, there's, uh, when, when people blend sounds, you know, I'm just being kind of scientific, but when people blend sounds together of a certain vibration, then your, um, your chakras are going to open up, you know, and uh, there's a sense of bonding that happens um, that uh, won't, won't necessarily happen through just having a meal together like that. And, um, you know, we're, we're actually very much hearing beings, and uh, it, it's extremely helpful. Um, so the, the, the idea of, like, you know, having someone that is able to keep up the rhythm and keep up the beat and, and work with tone uh, is, is so much what yoga meditation is all about. Because... Um, balance and tone and rhythm and beat is like the life force, right? So um, when they cut out music classes and <laughs> school and kids don't get, you know, they, they're not musical, it's very difficult. And then people get, they get shy with their own voice, right? Um, so uh, the the voice and the the sound is really important. Um, th there's a whole history of what kirtan is coming from traditional sources, and Mike could speak better to that, you know. But uh, the name, the name of our center, um, uh, and all, all our affiliations are the Lion's Roar. So, your the the speech is important, and Lama Sangkapa in the future will be the Lion's Roar Buddha. So lines or you know you're you're actually you know saying something you're actually expressing something you know and you know making a sound <laughs> and so you know singing early on in our practice is, is very useful that so people connect with the teacher they connect with the idea of somehow you know healing and helping and take a responsibility and then this the song can put it together. But I know uh, growing up, people become very shy or look like I don't want to sing unless I can be, you know, on the opera stage or something. So that's, that's sad, right? So when I've studied with my teachers, I mentioned in silk offerings or Ghana chalk offerings, um, you you don't just get to sing along to the Dakini song or something. You're put on the spot and made to sing. So uh, there's different levels of tantra. Beginning tantra is we let you sing along, but more advanced tantra is you're on the spot. Because the world is always asking, tell me how you love me. Right? That's it. You know, show me your love right now. That's that's the tantric approach, right? So when the plane's going down, you don't want to say, I'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> you want to have another chance, right? So tantra is very, very not just be in the present, but show you show me how you love me right now, right? Are you in or you're out? That's real tantra, right? No lukewarm, lukewarm uma, no lukewarm abedute. Like, you're in, you're out. You're in, then be in. If you're out, that's okay, you're out. But highest level tantra doesn't mean like a big mush of everybody gets to be everybody. No, it's like, show me your love right now. What do you got? It's like that. So that's a fun part. And kirtan's fun. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Good, good questions. We're coming to the end here.
hopefully you all feel fulfilled and feel a little hungry too. We have, we have some food now. Mm. That is okay. Dedication. Due to the merit of these virtuous actions, may quickly you change the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by the snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chimrizin Tianjin Gyatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all my readers achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of a deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, these remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion, Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of entire hosts of arms, Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages, Lo Sangdrapa, I make request at your holy feet. Thanks, and get another picture of me, okay? <laughs> so, okay, you know. No, I know. Yeah, you can do it. Okay, yeah. All right, right, yeah. back. So uh, next Friday, we have expressions. And it's at seven o'clock. And there's music, poetry, dance. It's amazing. And um, it starts at seven. But if you come at six, uh, we'll put you to work. <laughs> and that's actually the funnest part to me, just to get to talk to each other. And then um, in April, we have uh, April 7th, actually, we have a refuge ceremony with Geshe Damcho and uh, Rinpoche. Um, a refuge ceremony, and also it's called Entering the Path, and if, if you'd like to know more about that, um, I'm happy to talk to you. And then um, we also, I just wanted to remind people that in May, Ling Rinpoche, um, the Dalai Lama's former tutor, a reincarnation of the Dalai Lama's tutor, uh, will uh, join us for a teaching on May 29th. And, um, and then also the Kirtan, sounds like that's coming up which is really fun. I really miss that. So uh, that's all I can think of at the moment. Does anybody else have an announcement? Oh, uh, there's going to be a pruning planting party. Um, do you have a date in mind yet? Or we, we, That's going to be coming up, and um, that's a time for us all to come together outside and make our spruce up our, our home. And, and Matthew right here is responsible and help us with that. Thank you. Oh, my God.